Hello, um, it's hump day and I'm coming to you from Centennial Park in the middle of Sydney, which is my favourite place. I got in the car and the car just automatically takes me to Centennial Park because I love it. Um, anyway, I'm going to talk today about anxiety and I'm a little anxious myself because I'm rather late with today's training at two. It's now, I don't know, half past three or something. So my apologies for that. But I was just having a really nice coffee with somebody and we were having a chat about her rather anxious horse and so I wanted to talk about that and how what we can do about horses anxiety and why some horses are more anxious than others and how we can help them with that it's it's something I hear more often than anything else when I ask people you know you still always be confidence people used to say oh I'm just lacking confidence but when you start questioning that confidence thing a bit it turns out that they're mostly lacking confidence because their horses are quite anxious and and that's interesting because I think the, the two things feed on each other so the confidence thing is really about not knowing what might happen next so as rider confidence I lack confidence if I think the horse might shy or if I think the horse isn't well trained and therefore is lacking some training it will need or some response it will need to keep me and the horse safe. So it's the lack of confidence is not knowing what will happen next and I think the anxious horse is also really lacking confidence. So if you've got an anxious horse I think the most important thing to do is to give it some really good foundation training. And what I was just talking to my friend about then was about her horse isn't, you can't show your horse everything, let's put it like that. Like, you know, the horse is scared of an umbrella, okay, you can show it an umbrella, but we were in the park here, and some horses live in this park, there's one over there just coming our way. Um, and they must see the strangest things, there are some fairly strange people in this park and you can't show the horse everything so the horse has to be able to generalize now some horses do that better than others you know what we really need the horse to be able to do is to understand that if the horse is with you if you're riding if the horse is in your bubble of communication that it's safe so we can't show it everything that's potentially frightening. What we can do is we can put the horse inside the bubble of communication, there's a big bus, to, to keep the horse feeling safe and confident and therefore reduce its anxiety level. So I do that personally by teaching the horse give to the bit. Now that's why I do that first of all. And a lot of people do, they look at give to the bit and they see the horses in frame. It's in, you know, what you might look at as a, a dressage frame, perhaps, because the horse is round and using its back and things. But for me, it's, it's not to do with that at all. For me, it's about relaxation, first and foremost. I need to be able to communicate with the horse. And give to the bit is all about the uh, pressure release and releasing the pressure at the right time. I need to be able to communicate with the horse so that the horse stays in that bubble of communication so when i pick up some pressure on the reins i want that horse to respond by doing something which might be just drop its head and relax it might be turn it might be slow down but whatever that is i'm going to release that pressure when the horse makes the movement i've requested so the horse then understands that if it stays in the bubble and we get this communication going, that it's actually, there's a correct answer to everything. And so what I was saying earlier is that while we can't show the horse everything, if the horse gets afraid of something and looks up and bursts your bubble, you know, the horse's ears go wow, like this and the bubble bursts. If that happens, you can collect your horse back up and say, okay, now I want you to relax, come around, be soft in the bridle, and relax and I want you to step right or I want you to drop your head or I want you to step left or slow down or speed up. We're back to communicating, the horse comes back in the bubble and then the horse says, oh, I understand this, I know this. And so the horse stops looking to the outside and comes back under, under your stimulus control. 
which is the really important thing. And then eventually, if you keep doing that with the horse, so this is a great environment to practice that sort of thing in. You know, the Centennial Park is quite a scary environment for a horse. And you can get, you know, a hundred different scary things on one trip, one four kilometer trip around the park. And so every time the horse comes across this, you say, no, no, listen, you pick up the rein, so give to that pressure the horse gives you, release it, you praise the horse. So every time that happens, you're reinforcing this wonderful foundation lesson of relaxation. And so the horse is being educated along the way. You're not just trying to stop the horse from being afraid. We can't stop the horse from being afraid. All we can do is engage its brain with something a little bit more interesting and something that it can mentally manage. And by doing that, the horse is then no longer alone. The horse is no longer on its own feeling scared of the environment. The horse has come back into the safety of your bubble, which keeps you both safe and you can travel off together as a team that's me for today and i apologize for being late